All right, so this is going to be video number two, and today we're going to be talking about the Acaso EK7000 that uh, all of us received from CCA. So uh, we've already gone through the unboxing, so if you haven't watched that video yet, be sure to watch the video. It's going to be super important so that you know what all the components look like. And if you did watch that video, you'll see that all of my camera components are in my Tupperware, like I had said. And uh, right now, I'm just going to tilt down real quick. I've got everything laid out that we're going to be talking about specifically. I'm going to show you how to uh, get started right out of the box, and we're going to also show you how to better control your camera. So before we go into any of that, uh, be sure to watch that first video, and also be sure to uh, try to follow along so that it doesn't get too confusing. So let's go ahead and uh, you know totally mess around with the camera, and then we'll get started. So first things first, there are a couple of apps that I have pulled up here on my phone, and uh, I apologize if it's a little overexposed. The name of the apps are Acaso DV. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to download that again. And I'm also going to point you in the direction of some of the other apps that they have. They have Acaso Go, Acaso Smart. So they have a lot of other stuff. But the very first thing that you're going to want to download is called Acaso DV. So Acaso DV will take you into this. App. Now, what it's going to ask you to do is select your camera. And as we've said before, it's the Acaso EK7000 Plus. So it's this camera. Now, if you try to connect it, it's going to say, oh, I'm doing all this fun stuff. And, you know, I'm spinning and I'm spinning and I'm spinning and doing a thing. But it's going to say connection failed. Now, that makes sense. <laughs> We're not connected. So how do we do that? Well, First and foremost, we're gonna to have to go ahead and power up our camera. Now, if you're just unboxing the camera today, make sure that you separate these immediately. These are the batteries, they're lithium ion batteries, and they have a pretty good battery life that I haven't really been able to kill just yet, so I don't know what the actual battery life looks like, and I'll get back to you guys soon on that, but these are the batteries that we're talking about. Before you put them in your camera, you are gonna to need to charge them, so go ahead and place them in the dock, plug them into a USB device, like your computer, and then let them charge. They will turn blue when they're ready to go. Now, one thing I do want to say, it is a bit of a design flaw, so I want to let you know, the battery goes in the bottom of the camera, which is great, and it has this little tape piece so that you can easily pull it out. So don't remove this. Don't, uh, don't go and chop that off. That's going to be important later. It's going to be how you take it out but the design flaw really is in the door for the battery. It's this little tiny plastic thing. Um, it does take a couple tries to get it uh, situated and aligned uh, perfectly flat. So make sure that this notch is sitting where it's supposed to be, and then don't try to cram it in there. It is kind of a fragile piece. So just be very cautious. And, and you can see my first attempt, it didn't even fit. So sometimes I uh, you know, forget, but make sure that it is sitting flat just like that, okay? So now that we've talked about the battery pack, which honestly is probably the, the one thing that I can say that's negative about this camera, I'm really not having any other problems. So we'll put our battery in, go ahead and do that, and then we're good to go. So right now we have the battery placed inside of the camera. Now, first things first, let's talk about some of the buttons. The button that's right here on the front that says mode and has that power, that international symbol for power, that's gonna be our power button. Over here on the sides, these are gonna be directional up and down. And they're also going to be the way that we utilize some of the menus and how to turn things on and off. And then of course, up here at the top, we have our standard shutter button. So if you're using this as a camera, uh, as, a, as, as a camera to take a photo, that would be your shutter camera. And if you're using it directly on the machine, on this camera, to start or stop a video, that will be the button that you utilize. On the back, you can see that we have a very basic, uh, a very basic display. This is so that we can go ahead and see what we're actually filming. But of course, it's going to be much lower in quality than what we will get on the other end. And then over here, we have a couple of ports. So the one on top is micro. Uh, that's micro USB. That's going to be what this plugs into eventually if you want to pull your files off directly. Uh, and then below we have micro HDMI. It's a pretty, pretty uncommon uh, one to have, but you can also use that for transferring video files. Finally, we have the slot for our SD card. 
So, and this is a micro SD card. So the SD card that we have, it's a Scandis Ultra. This is the one that you're gonna go ahead and put in there. So we'll start by doing that. Now, if you've never used one of these before, I'm gonna tell you right now that micro SD cards can be very uh, finicky. So if you're like me and you have absolutely zero fingernails whatsoever, it may take a couple tries to get them in there. But once it clicks in, you'll be good to go. If you're putting it in the wrong direction, upside down or backwards, it won't let you push it in. So if you're getting a lot of resistance, don't keep pushing in, I promise you are going to break your camera and your card, so don't do that. All right, so let's review. We've got a battery, we've got an SD card, this camera's ready to go. If we don't have the battery and the SD card, this camera does absolutely nothing. It doesn't capture uh, to the computer directly, so you can have a battery in there, but with nothing to capture with, it's not going to do anything. Now. There are ways to pass through Wi-Fi, but the quality will be much less. So let's go ahead and turn it on. So this is our power button. Hold for about three seconds. Press and hold. Let's try that one more time. Hmm. I may need to troubleshoot this. My battery may have died. So. You know what? I'll be right back. I will let you guys know what the problem is in just a minute. Okay, so of course this wouldn't be a technical video if there wasn't a technical failure. So uh, the battery that I had in it before, right over there, that died overnight. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn it on. So like I said, about three seconds holding on the power button up on the front. And you'll see that that opens up immediately. Now there's a lot on the, ca on the back camera screen on this uh, on, on uh, the recording screen. But one thing I wanna point out right now is that my camera is probably not going to be able to show you everything that's there. So what you'll end up seeing up at the top is uh, recordable time, how much time you've recorded, what mode you're in. So it should be either a camera or a video camera. So a photography version camera or video camera. And then on the left in the upper screen, you're gonna see some numbers. It should say out of the box, 1080p and underneath it'll say 60. I have mine changed over to, to 30 uh, frames per second and the reason why um, is because of the way that the video looks when you have it in 60 frames. It's very fast and it looks very smooth but it almost looks cheap so unless you're used to looking at things like that it doesn't really look the right way. So the best way I can explain it is uh, one of those old cheap soap operas from uh, back in the 80s and 90s. That's kind of the video quality that you get. Now, we've got our camera on, but we don't have it in Wi-Fi. To turn Wi-Fi on, we're going to press down on this down button. So if we press down on the down button, you'll see that it says Wi-Fi on. Now, to use Wi-Fi, there's a lot of information there. It says the SSD is iCam Acaso 81 or uh, 8. Yeah, 81F699. What that is, is uh, it is putting out its own, it's putting out its very own Wi-Fi signal. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to open up my Wi-Fi on my phone. And I'm on my home Wi-Fi, but I also have a new network called iCam Acaso. So if I connect up to that, if I connect up to that, it shows that it is, and as I said before, it, it's really hard for you guys to read because it's oversaturated, but it says Wi-Fi connection ready, Eric's iPhone. It's not going to say that it's ready right away for you. I've already connected to this device, so all that you need to do is put in the password, and it looks like the password is standard at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. So just numbers one through nine and then a zero at the end. What that's going to give me the ability to do now that I'm connected to the internal Wi-Fi router or the internal Wi-Fi broadcaster on the camera, is I'm going to be able to go over here to the Acaso DV app. Now what I can do is I can connect. Now here in the app is where you can change most of the settings, if not all of the settings. And you can see there's a live, there's a live video feed really cool it's really easy and you can see if you're a camera buff or a film buff the uh the aperture or the way that the camera is shooting is in a fisheye i'm working on how to change that from a fisheye to a more standard version but that really is kind of the way that these cameras are made because they're supposed to be used in extreme sports so that you can get the most out of it so if you grew up watching skateboarding videos like i did 
this is a very common aperture to see, but this isn't the way that you necessarily have to have it. So let's do what I know I can show you right away, and I'm gonna change the resolution. So you can see that at the, out of the box, it starts with 1080p, 60 frames per second. And it's, again, very hard to see, but the movement is very smooth, but the end product ends up looking a lot more akin to one of those old 90s soap operas. You can also change it to uh, 1080p, 30 frames per second, and then that's gonna be a little bit closer to what you're normally used to seeing in all of your regular media. There is another option here for 720p at 120 frames per second. Don't be fooled. That is a slow motion camera. So unless you're doing something that would benefit from that, like you're doing something so quickly that having it in slow motion would be beneficial, it's not gonna be worth your while. So we'll go ahead and we'll select what I already have, which is 1080p at 30 frames per second, and then we'll go from there. Now, if you look down here at the bottom of the screen, you see an arrow. So you can change a lot of the stuff here. You can change your video mode. Uh, you can change to a photo mode. You can also use uh, photo burst, self timer, and photo mode itself. So let's look at photo mode. So in photo mode, you can see that it's, uh, there's a lot of numbers up here at the, tw at the top. 12M, four, uh, 4608 times 2592. This is saying that it's a 12 megabit camera, and this is a pixel resolution that you're gonna get out of taking pictures like this. So you can actually take pictures remotely from your device. So boom, we just took a picture. And then that will actually populate into the, uh, into the app's internal storage, and we'll be able to look at all of that directly here on the device. If you have a Mac, if you're using a Mac device and you have an iPhone, then this stuff will also get auto-populated into your, uh, into your own uh, photo album. And as I said before, of course, if it's a technical review, of course, something isn't going to work. So it looks like we're going to have some problems here. I will say the app is a little buggy, but for the most part, it works. But in the event that you don't want to use all this stuff, that's okay, because you can do all of that directly on the camera itself. Now, how does all of this work when you are using a mount or using some type of, uh, some type of a device to, uh, to basically hold everything? Well, let's take a look at the one that I anticipate most of you will use, which is this clip-on case. And the clip-on case is super easy. It clips onto your belt, and for the camera, it clips right in. You can see that we can still access all the buttons. The only thing that really gets covered is this indicator light that says that we are on or are not on. But we can still access all the other aspects of it. We can turn it on and off. We can go through the menu. And then the other thing, the other drawback, obviously, is that we can't see the screens. We can't see what's going on. But that's okay. If we're looking at this, if we're using our phone, we can figure out what we're looking at. And because of the aperture, which is that uh, the camera lens itself, the way that it's set up, we're going to get a lot more. We're going to get a much wider view of everything else. Also, we have the ability to take pictures with take pictures and start and stop video using our remote. So let's go ahead and take a picture. The red button is what we're gonna to press to take a picture. And you'll see, boom, we just took a picture. If we wanna take a video, you can press that, and now we're recording. Press that again, and we can stop. Now, if you're trying to figure out the best way for us to go ahead and uh, get all of this information off, that's a pretty, that's a pretty good uh, thing that you wanna have taken care of. There's a couple different ways that we can get media off of our uh, EK7000. If I can turn it off, which I just got off, there we go, I can show you. Now, we can take our SD card out and we can plug that directly into our laptop, or we can use an SD card reader for a larger uh, reader slot in a computer. So we have those options. We also have the option to plug in our micro USB cable and then go directly into the camera's internal storage, which is, again, the SD card, and pull them down directly from there. Finally, we have the ability to go into the app and then pull them up directly from the app's internal storage. Now, I'm disconnected from my camera right now, but you saw the process of doing that. So let's go over to our Hmm. Well, 
it looks like we're going to have a problem with that being off. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go back, turn the camera on. And of course, everybody kind of has their way of doing things. So if this is the, the way that works for you, then that's totally fine. Well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and let's connect up again. Let's see if uh, we can access those. Uh, let's see if we can go ahead and access those. Oops, I think I need to go back into my settings and uh, go over to my, there we go. So once the camera itself turns off, the hotspot, the, uh, the Wi-Fi hotspot that it's uh, creating, that goes away. So you're gonna have to do that every time, unfortunately. And as I spend a little bit more time looking at this stuff, I'll let you know uh, how things work out. So now we're in, my, uh, we're in my gallery. So you can see the first photo. Congratulations, Eric, you took a picture of your hand. Go Johnson. You can see that it's a picture of my hand. Well, let's go ahead and let's go. Let's uh, try this as a recording. So again, we're using the app. We have the camera. So let's go ahead and start. So now we're filming. You can see that we're filming. Is my old mug? Woo! Now we're back. Stop the video, and hopefully this works. So I apologize if I have to reset. There's our video. And you can see that it's buffering right now. Once it's done buffering, it'll be able to play. Now, what you're seeing is not an actual representation. So you won't be able to hear audio in it right in the app. But what you can do, you can click on the file. And then you can go down here and press save. So that'll download and you can have that go directly into your, uh, into your uh, photo albums here on your phone. That's probably not the way that most people are going to do it because they don't have all of this set up on their phone. So what I wanna show you guys is exactly how all of this works out if you're on the computer. So what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, start a screen share and I'm gonna plug this camera in so that you guys can see what's going on. So while I do all of that, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit more about the camera. So one of the best aspects of this camera is the fact that it has multiple uh, abilities to record. You can record in different, uh, you can record in different, in different aspects. You can record in different overall, uh, in different overall uh, speeds. But what I really like about it is that it's so easy to plug and play out of the box. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn the camera itself off. I'm gonna make sure that it is populating on my computer, which of course it is not yet. Because why would that work? But once it does, once it self realizes and uh, does all of that, we'll go ahead and we will start a screen share so that you guys can see what's going on. And we're back. Now, I just found out that uh, apparently when I plugged in my camera earlier, it automatically turned the camera on, and that's probably why the battery died. But that's what you need to do to get access to this camera and all of its files. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to screen share in the video so that you can see what's going on. So you can see here that the drive itself pulls up as a CASO, and on my computer, it's in the D drive which is usually like a removable drive. But if you've got a larger computer or you've got things set up in a different way, it may look a little bit different. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this actually looks like in the photo album. So if we open up the videos, you can see right here is a, uh, is a file. Now I use VLC as a decoder, but you can use uh, Windows Media Player, you can use I, iPhoto or anything else on Mac. Uh, your computer should identify it. But if you are having trouble opening these files, Go ahead and download VLC, which is a video decoder. It's free, it's super easy to use, and uh, it does seem to work on district computers. So we can go ahead and open this up. So now we're filming. See that we're filming. And now you can see. Now we're back. And now you can see that the video does work in here. Let's go back over here to our, uh, to our camera. If you look in here under photos, 
here's our photo of my hand. So that's pretty much going to be the best way for you to pull these things down. Because you have the ability to capture on one screen, but uh, actually download and save files on multiple different devices, I would recommend that if you're gonna go ahead and do this, that you make sure that you use a, uh, that you use the cable that's, that's provided and download everything to your desktop. That's how you're gonna get the best quality. So I'm gonna stop sharing real quick and I'm gonna turn the camera back to me. So, howdy. Now, all the things that we talked about with the uh, EK7000 so far are pretty straightforward. If you do wanna get a little bit more into it, you're gonna to have to access the menus. So we're gonna talk about the menus in our next video where we go into a bit more technical dive of how all of this works. But what you need to know is if you are not necessarily going to change anything, you can use the camera in the settings that it has out of the box and you won't have to really do anything to get it to run the way that you want it. Like I said, I have a little bit different idea of what I do want and what I don't want. And I didn't want to have that camera uh, filming at 60 frames per second so that it would look like a, like I said before, a soap opera. So I changed that. Changing it is super easy. You can do it directly on your phone in the app. You can also do it directly on the camera itself. However, the one thing you can't do is change anything on the camera when it's plugged into your laptop. The only thing that you can do on your camera when it's plugged into your laptop is access the internal memory on that SD card. So the only thing that you can do is grab files and then put them directly on your computer, download them. So you won't be able to do any kind of a pass through like that. So there are different ways to change the menu options. Uh, I honestly think that directly on the app is gonna be the easiest way, um, but some of you may wanna do it um, you know, in a more tactile or tactile fashion. Uh, and do it directly on the camera. So it's entirely up to you. That concludes the, uh, the actual review of the camera. We've already done our unboxing, so be sure to watch the unboxing video. This video went over all of the different components. And then finally, we'll do a third video to break down some of the more advanced features. So it's going to be kind of a limited video. Uh, I think most of the people that know what they want and know how to get the uh, advanced features out of it are gonna be able to do it on their own. And that's probably going to be our video editing and uh, uh, other teachers of that caliber. But you know, if you do want to change it a little bit, and you don't want your um, you don't want your videos to look like The Young and the Restless or Days of Our Lives, then I'll show you how to do that. So until we come back, have a good one. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.